The uncanny valley is the hypothesis that predicts that an entity that appears almost human, like a humanoid robot or computer-generated figure, will arouse a sense of unease or revulsion in the person viewing it. Uncanny being the psychological experience of something being strangely familiar, unsettling, or eerie, and valley referring to the dip and rise in the human observer's emotional responses. The concept was identified by the robotics professor Masahiro Mori in the 1970s. The term was first translated as Uncanny Valley in the 1978 book Robots, Fact, Fiction and Prediction, thus forging an unintended link to Ernest Gensch's concept of the uncanny. Professor Mori's original hypothesis states that, as the appearance of a robot is made more human, an observer's emotional response to the robot becomes increasingly positive and empathetic, until suddenly it reaches a point where it quickly becomes strong revulsion. As the robot's appearance continues to become less distinguishable from a human being, the emotional response becomes positive once again and approaches human-to-human -human empathy levels. A number of theories have been proposed to explain why Uncanny Valley occurs. Mate selection theory is the theory that we are put off in order to avoid selecting this non-human as a mate, as we perceive its strangeness and visible features to be linked to low fertility, poor hormonal health, and ineffective immune systems. The pathogen avoidance theory is similar to that of the mate selection theory, as we also inherently avoid potential sources of pathogens by having a disgusted response when we see defects. Basically, the visual abnormalities of androids and robots causes alarm and revulsion as we think they are diseased. The mortality salience theory is that the robot elicits an innate fear of death and plays on subconscious fears of reduction, replacement and annihilation. We fear that we are all just soulless machines, much like a robot. Sorite's paradoxes is when stimuli with human and non-human traits undermine our sense of human identity by linking qualitatively different categories, human and non-human, by a quantitative metric, degree of human likeness. Another theory is that it is a violation of human norms. If an entity looks sufficiently non-human, its human characteristics are noticeable, generating empathy. However, if the entity looks almost human, we have expectations of how it should appear and act. And when the non-human characteristics are noticeable, it gives the human viewer a sense of strangeness. In other words, a robot stuck inside the uncanny valley is no longer judged by the standards of a robot doing a passable job at pretending to be a human, but is instead judged by the standards of a human doing a terrible job at acting like a normal person. Other theories of what causes the uncanny valley are religious definition of human identity, conflicting perceptual cues, and a threat to humans' distinctiveness and identity. A number of criticisms have been raised concerning whether or not the uncanny valley exists as a single phenomenon which can hold up to scientific scrutiny. Firstly, younger generations who are more used to robots and androids may be much less likely to have an uncanny valley. Secondly, Uncanny Valley is difficult to identify, label, and study, as it involves different senses and causes for different people. The Uncanny Valley can appear at any degree of human likeness, and good design can lift human-looking entities out of the Uncanny Valley. For instance, research has shown that making the entity appear childlike or cartoonish can lift them out of the Uncanny Valley. Due to rapid advancements in the areas of artificial intelligence and effective computing, cognitive scientists have suggested the possibility of an uncanny valley of the mind, in which people may experience strong feelings of aversion if they encounter highly advanced, emotion-sensitive technology. 